welcome to my channel. In today's video, you are going to finally learn how to crochet. We'll be going over uh, some crochet basic information that you should know and how to do a slip knot, a chain, and how to start working back into your chain. So let's get started. You will need yarn. I have some basic worsted weight yarn. That's what I recommend for beginners. Worsted weight is also known as Four weight yarn or sometimes it can be referred to as Aran weight which is like a slightly thicker version of worsted weight but any like medium weight yarn will do or even DK weight which is like a slightly thinner version of worsted weight that would be like a weight three but any of those like middle range of like thicknesses. Blanket yarn is cute but you'll have a hard time seeing your stitches if you're a newbie and then anything too fuzzy or delicate like say mohair, you'll just have a hard time if you're just starting out. Crochet hooks, there are all different types. I have this version, which you can see the top of it. This is known as an inline crochet hook. And then this version has a tapered neck. That's a matter of preference. One is not better than the other. It's just what you like working with. And then there's all aluminum with a grip or just full aluminum, no grip. Also a matter of preference, if you are crocheting for long periods of time, uh, a grip will serve you better than no grip. It'll be a lot easier on the hand. So for today's demonstration, I will be using my tulip crochet hook. You'll need scissors, stitch marker, that's optional, but it always uh, can be useful to newbies because you learn very quickly that you cannot count as well as you think you can. And then let's learn how to read a yarn label. So right here, it says this is a medium weight for yarn. This is known as gauge. So you know you have the correct tension. If you have 17 stitches and 23 rows, and it works out to a four inch by four inch square, and that's using a 5.5 millimeter uh, knitting needles. And then it recommends a 5.5 meter uh, millimeter crochet hook which is also known as an eye that is how you read a yarn label you could also see here that it's acrylic yarn this is the color and lot number if you're making something big like a blanket or even a sweater make sure you buy more than enough yarn for the project because dye lots can matter and you can end up noticing like a difference in color if you get two skeins from different dye lots so you just open this bad boy up. Now there are two kinds of people in this world. Those who center pull, and then those who pull from the outside. I prefer to pull from the outside. I know that's a controversial decision to some, but I feel like if you center pull, you tend to run into more issues with knots, and that's just not for me, fam. So unravel some, we'll back this up, up a little bit, and we will get into the meat and potatoes, if you will. So you'll take your yarn. To do a slip stitch, the easiest way is you take it, go over your finger twice, hold it there, take the back loop, pull it over the front loop, leave it, and take what is now the back loop and pull it back over the front loop and over your finger. And that creates a slip knot. And a slip knot is the kind of knot where you like pull one side and it tightens. So I'll show you again. Two wraps, back, over front, new back, over front, and over finger. And then you insert your hook and you tighten it up. To make a chain, yarn over, hold the like knot area on your or just below it on your yarn tail and pull through. Yarn over. Now you can hold that first chain closer and pull through. Yarn over, pull through. So you would chain up however many you want to or need to for your pattern. So I'm gonna just chain a couple more. And then I'll tell you the parts of the chain. That should be good. We got a little chain. I don't know how many stitches that is. We could count it. So to count it, you're gonna be counting Vs. So this first V 
The loop here does not count it as a V. The first V is the one under it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that is nine chains. Uh, so you can see the Vs, those would be stitches basically. And then if you flip it over, you see this little bump running down the back in the middle, that's called the back bump. Usually on patterns, if it says chain however many, and then you like start your pattern basically, you're gonna be working into the top part of the V, not the back bump. So to work back into it, you put your crochet hook into it, yarn over, pull through, yarn over again, and then pull through the two loops on your hook. So that is a single crochet working back into your chain. So I'll show you again, under just that top part of your V, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the two. Uh, on some patterns, it'll specifically say work into the back bumps, but nine times out of 10, you won't need to do that. Uh, so we'll just crochet, single crochets down the chain. Okay, into it, yarn over, pull through, there's two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through, and I will get to the end of the chain and show you how to work back. Okay, so I'm on the last chain stitch. I finished it. Now here, you yarn over, just pull through the one on your hook. That is called a turning chain because you do it and then you turn. And then typically you work back through starting with the first stitch right here. You can see this is your like turning chain and then this is where you'd work into. Uh, and how you can tell is if you hold your work, you can see those V's running down. And if you ever get lost, you just look at the V's coming from under your loop so you can see like where they go. Because of how stitches can lean, that is not, as you can tell, right on top of my chain stitch. That is like kind of to the front of my chain stitch. You see all those V's? That's where you're working it. I put this back on, tighten it up, and you go in and under both loops now. Okay, you yeah, see? When you go under a V, you'll be able to see there's two. And you just pull through, two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through. And then basically, if you do this on a much longer, larger scale with more chain stitches and more rows, you'd make a blanket. So I would recommend going ahead and practicing a chain and working into it with just single crochets uh, before moving on to the next video in this series. The next video in the series, we're going to go back over how to do a slip knot and a chain, but then we'll be working with another stitch and not a single crochet. So I will see you guys in the next one.